little while since I've had it, and it's honestly taken me quite a while to really find some things I didn't like about it. And I had to wait really till I found some things I didn't really like, because other than that, it just sounds like a promotion. I'm just saying only good things about it. Uh, there are a couple things I don't like about it. I will get to that in a little bit, but I'm with this helicopter pass. So getting into it, my particular Sabenza is the Insingo grind with the plain handle, and the main reason why I wanted the plain handle was just because I really wanted this to be a work knife or a knife that I wasn't going to be afraid to actually use. And so I just chose a very plain model and I still like it a lot. It is still uh, very smooth. It's every bit as good as any Savenza. Start off, um, this is the Insingo grind and the Insingo grind has really impressed me with its very fine, do fine scale. tasks without really sacrificing the structural integrity. As I mentioned in the previous, or in the first impressions, it's pretty much like a reversed drop point, and I really do love this design. It's very agile, but yet very strong, and I think overall aesthetically very pleasing. And like I said, I'm really surprised Sabenza doesn't make the Insingo grind in all of the different handle variations, because I think this would look really awesome with some of the nice woods and the gold. Uh, I think it would look really cool with that. Any of the awesome 3D cut machinery in the titanium, some of those things just look really awesome. And I think they look even more awesome with the Insingo. Anyways, other than that, uh, that this is CPM S35VN, and this is my first time with this steel. A lot like CPM uh, 3V in the fact that it has very very good wear resistance and edge retention pretty much you don't need to do anything to it i haven't actually touched this edge at all ever since i got it and not even with a strop or anything and it hasn't dulled and i don't necessarily use this thing every single day with lots and lots of wear but it doesn't really show any signs like it wants to wear or get dull so it's overall like i said a lot like CPM 3V and all the testing I've done with it. Uh, as far as the grind goes, the grind is pretty interesting uh, and that is just because generally I don't really like hollow grinds. Uh, I've not been a fan of other hollow grinds in the past, but this hollow grind or the Sabenza's hollow grinds are really well done. I've actually now come to like hollow grinds, at least for everyday carry applications. I'm not saying I'd use it for bushcrafting. Uh, I don't think it's really strong for bushcrafting, but for everyday carry where you're opening boxes or you're cutting through tape or plastics or whatever you're cutting through, this is a really nice, very thin hollow grind that is insane at slicing it. It's just incredible. And the out-of-box edge on it is also very, very good. Um, it's very polished and it, once again, only further assist the grind in just slicing through things very effortlessly. So other than that, uh, of course, this is just the plain titanium handle. It's held up pretty well. I was pretty surprised uh, how actually tacky this bead blasted titanium is. And it's, it's really good for uh, overall grip. Like I've never felt like the traction was going to break even without the jimping. The uh, overall tackiness of this titanium I'm sure if you got if you had wet hands, it wouldn't be as good. But generally, if you have dry hands, uh, the tackiness of this titanium is very grippy. So other than that, the durability has been very good. Once again, this is a work knife, and I am not necessarily going to plunge it into like a bag of gravel or try and purposely abuse it. But I do actually use it, and uh, it's held up very nice, especially the titanium handles. This is what catches most of the beading and as you guys can see uh, the camera probably doesn't do the best job of picking it up but it is pretty much like the day I got it other than on these edges there's definite wear marks and on the clip of course there's definite rub marks. So you can see this thing definitely has some use on it but it's not actually too bad. So some of the things I dislike one of them is and this is just I guess for me I don't know if anyone else has this problem with their Sabenzas but it always seems that there is so much stuff that gets into the pivot and just so much dust and lint get caught up in it 
it seems like a lot more than on any other knives and I believe that's just because the tolerance in here is so little that the little bit does get caught up in there seems like a lot more but I do find myself having to clean this knife for this kind of action that just drops free and is silky smooth I do find myself cleaning it more than any of my other knives which isn't necessarily a terrible thing the knife is very easy to clean and take apart and I do like the fact that Chris Reeves uh, they actually want you to take it apart and they send the tools and the proper things for maintenance and uh, taking apart the Sabenza. And so that's really Other nice. Other than that, uh, the one thing that I really, really do dislike about this knife is its clip. And it's not necessarily that the clip isn't deep carry. Uh, the design of it looks really nice, uh, but I dislike how catchy this piece is here. Uh, it sticks up. In my opinion way too much and I find this piece getting caught on a lot of things and I've actually had this knife pulled out of my pocket multiple times by it just brushing up against like pieces of wood or cordage or anything and it just catches it right there just pulls it right out and uh, yeah I'm not a very big fan of how how much this catches and it's just awesome. It seems like this knife especially does it more than anything else. I mean, my Spyderco, as an example here, you can see how it's not nearly as flared out. Well, I hope you guys can see that. It's not nearly as flared out as the Sabenza's, and I find the Spyderco's is about perfect, where it'll always catch, or just about always catch your pocket. If you put it and seat it up nicely, it will pretty much always catch your pocket. This one always catches your pocket as well, but I feel that they just bent it just a little little bit too far up and it likes rather loves to catch on things and I really do dislike that especially being that this is an over $400 knife I really have to keep my eye on it because it really wants to run away it's kind of sucky for a $400 knife I'm not particularly happy about this one being the most runaway happy but other than that um, other than the catch happy clip, um, I don't really have any problems with the knife. I think it's very well done. Uh, it definitely is worth $400 in my opinion. Some people will say it's not. Um, I think really in order to fully understand its price point, you really have to at least handle one and just feel the build quality, uh, just how smooth the lockup is. And once again, this knife is really for people who love knives. If you're just kind of a semi-avid user of knives, you probably won't fully get why someone would spend this much money for it. But if you really do love knives and you just love precision machinery that just is so elegant and simple at the same time, it, this knife makes pretty much total sense. Other than that, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Uh, like I said, if you don't mind the price, the performance is just superb on it. Uh, competitive options, there's definitely a lot out there for $400, but Sabenza has been at this for many, many years, and this isn't necessarily a new design. Something that also really brought me to Sabenza was the price, and that is that I've been watching it for the last few years, and the price has always stayed right at the same. And that's something that's really interesting or really special about Sabenzas is you'll see with a lot of hinders or uh, many other makers, their knives really fluctuate wildly with prices. And sometimes they get into big bubbles where they're like $600 and then they're right down to $200. Whereas Sabenzas have always managed to stay at that magical number of right around 400, anywhere from 400 to 410 for this model. Uh, it's just been constantly sitting there. And like I said, that's over many years. So I think the quality really speaks for itself just on the fact that the price never really fluctuates. There's always a steady want for them. And that's, that's certainly something to consider about getting them. And if you want to potentially resell them, the nice thing is you can carry one for say a couple months and sell it to really close what you paid for if that's your intention. Everything I have to say about the large Sabenza with the Insingo grind, uh, I would definitely recommend it. Like I said, if you're a knife enthusiast, uh, you'll love the knife. And uh, I'm out.